Los. Is a vertical tear in the anoderm below the dentate type. It is acute or chronic. This because of you. This is four common at six o'clock and twelve o'clock position. You understand in the, the thought way position. And anterior fissure you know are more common amongst women because of you know weak anterior fissure is weaker. Its sporting elements are weaker, and particularly the women get it more often just because of the child birth. Posterior fissure you know are common in men. Is that right? And what are the cause of these fissure you know? Number one is as I told you that in women the child birth any kind of a trauma, injury, constipation. Those people who have low fiber diet and those persons whose food contains having low residue, they are constipated and it is basically injury to the mucosa because of the hard stools. Patient has to struggle, he is straining when he is defecating and his hard stools may cause fissure in him. Otherwise there are other causes, you know, they are the multiple fissure, you know, you should suspect, you know, their general physical examination is very important. And your mind should always be suspicious that fissure in inu may be representative of some other disease, some kind of a granulometrous disorder. And what is the granulometrous disorder? Number one, that a person may be suffering from tuberculosis, which is not uncommon in our country. Number one, Gohan's disease. This is a patchy inflammatory disease of small and large, but any part of the gut can involve Crohn's disease, including the rectum and the anal canal. And even they have implicated, you know, ulcerative colitis. The other causes are sexually transmitted diseases. Person having some kind of a viral infection, like herpes simplex virus infection, in woman trachomatis vaginalis, chlamydia infection and you know persons who are having who are having other type of infections even the fungal infections like that okay and the clinical features are number one how does the patient present with generally it is pain the patient is in span so therefore the person with acute fissure in it's very you know uh, discomforting uh, disease he gets pain while defecating, while he's passing hard stools. And after he has passed stools, he may get relieved. And thereafter it will be rare quicker. Again, the patient will be having this kind of pain when he's passing stool. Alright? So that is the main thing. And second thing which may happen to the patient is while he's straining, he may have some kind of a bleeding also. The person with fissure in his nose may have discharge also mucus kind of a discharge. He may be having itchy and this kind of is scratching himself to relieve himself, right? So general physical the examination means that you have patient lies on the table. Do not do any digital rectal examination. That's very painful. And fissure in NO at types may be associated with an external hemorrhoid. There may be hypertrophic papilla inside near the, uh, this thing, what you call the dentate line. And externally, there is a thrombosed shadow, external hemorrhoid. All right, which is significant. That person is then it shows that there is external hemorrhoid. There was an attempt at healing of the fissure. So, what are the treatment? First of all, is management of fissure in ways that patient's defecatory habit should be improved. He should have a proper posture. Number two. The patient should be given rest. In case you suspect there's an infection, he can be given antibiotics. But basically, he must alter his dietary habits. He should have a high fiber diet. He should generally avoid low residue diet. The stools should be soft, you know, that when he's passing stools, it should not be a hard stool. So you should give some stool softener and you should give it. You know, bulk, bulky things, bulky drugs, you know, we have got, you know, like uh, husk, etc. And a uh, lot of uh, roughage and high fiber diet. All right. So stool should be soft. There should, you should avoid low fiber diet, high fiber diet, rest, 
and patient can should be given hot compresses that he should sit in warm water at least two to three times a day. He should be relieved. If he doesn't, then what do you do? You can apply some topical agents, including 5% topical jalocaine, local anesthesia, which can relieve his pain. Number one. Second thing, you can do some kind of a drugs like nitric oxide, glycyl trinitride, topical application. 0.2% apply four times a day. This will relieve the spasm. Once the spasm is relieved, what will happen is that perfusion will improve, the circulation will improve, and the pressure will heal. Is that right? You can give some kind of drug like nitric oxide, which is contained, you know, this glycotrinate, right? Why 2%, 3 to 4 times a day, which will relieve his spasm, relieve his pain, and improve circulation, and move well heal. The other thing which can do, you can do is, what can you can do? You can do the uh, topical application of Jalokin, 5% as uh, uh, And then you can also give Diltiagem, 2%. Diltiagem, 2%. Diltiagem has got one disadvantage, the patient may have some kind of a headache, you know, headache postural changes and things like that. So this will also be given twice a day. Then we have got if patient does not relent, he does not improve, then what do you do? We have to resort to some kind of a surgical practice. So what are the surgeries open to us? Number one. What are the surgeries you can notice out? Earlier what we used to do, four or five patients would have a dilatation. Number two was fishrectomy. And more simpler is lateral sphincterotomy, you can write it down. And basically lateral sphincterotomy. And then of course In the dilation, now there is a patient six or so at 12 o'clock, you know, you used to do the anal dilation, four finger anal dilation. This would relieve the symptoms, but you may, with the, you are doing anal dilation, the patient is in lithotomy position. The patient is in a lithotomy position, you know what a lithotomy position is. And he is taken up for surgery under, preferably under general anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia will anesthetize the patient for a long time, so it's not very much preferred. And you may use, you know, at times you may have this, what you call that, uh, local anesthesia also. So, you do four finger anal dilatation. That will, you know, relieve the patient of the pain, but one complication is that patient may have, we may, may damage the internal sphincter. Internal sphincter is the circular muscles, fibers. So therefore, they may be damaged in multiple places. So what are the outcome? Is incontinence. Patient may have incontinence for feces and stool. Yeah, let's say gas. Okay. So that is why it has not gone into. But if a, we have seen that if you moderate finger dilatation, you have done not four finger forcible dilatation, moderate finger dilatation. You know. That delivers the word. Second point is the fish rectomy. You attack the pathology directly where it is there. That is fish rectomy. U means you divide the fissure. Once you have divided the fissure, this will heal. But one of the problems of this direct uh, intervention is that once you have given an incision over the fissure, it will make a narrow gutter and feces will be, you know, passing through that gutter. And you know, this anal canal is is a place where there's all sort of a torrential flow of bacteria organisms, so theoretically, but generally anal mucosa is resistant to infections that you have seen and moves the heat very well. Okay, so therefore, fishrectomy is also a little bit not preferred, but we have seen, frankly, books mention otherwise, they prefer later sphincterotomy. But 
fish wreck me too is a very good thing. Patients are definitely improved, no doubt about it. And later sphincterotomy means that either at 3 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the patient line, they say, you know what is the 3 o'clock position and 9 o'clock position? 3 o'clock when the patient is lying in the pathway position, you move the lateral sphincterotomy. This is 3 o'clock, this is 9 o'clock. Right? So, in lateral sphincterotomy, what you do is, either of these places, you give a small incision. Lateral sphincterot means that, you know, you take a knife, sharp knife, and you divide the internal sphincter. You have gone, the fissure is there. Where is the fissure? Fissure is here. You have got a fissure here. But you are not intervening here. So you are going here at three o'clock position and you are dividing the packet. You know, like this. The internal sphincter. And this will be the the wound heals very well. The wound heals very well. Theoretically, there are chances of number one of the complications, but once you have divided it, you can do the repair also, number one. Theoretically, there are chances of the patient may have bleeding. There may be hematoma. What else? Sepsis. Sepsis can be there, infection can be there. And Complications like fistula, etc., are not observed. All right. And post operatively, the patient, you know, he gives warm bath, antibiotics, rest, high fiber diet, and his topical application. Okay. This is all about, I have to tell you about fissure in Inu. Okay.